Welcome to QD Clinic. QD Clinic is brought to you by the PSA campaign in the month of April. I'm Jack Cush with Room Now. Our case today is a case of colitis. And I guess the title would be, is the colitis from the drug or is it part of the syndrome, part of the spectrum of spondoarthritis? So this gentleman is a 60-year-old gentleman I've been taking care of for years. He was briefly tried on methotrexate. He was managed for many years with cyclosporin, then many years with cyclosporin and etanercept, and then over the years switched around to a few other TNF inhibitors. He always liked etanercept. He was always partial, said, I need that etanercept. And he had problematic skin and polyarticular deforming um, arthritis in the hands and feet, especially. So, um, you know, he's on, um, at the time I'm doing this visit, he's on prednisone, um, 10 milligrams a day. He uh, is just been moved to um, Simsia. He takes blood pressure medicines and whatnot. So the story basically is that he's on his third or fourth TNF inhibitor, and I talk him into going on to um, secukinumab an IL-17 inhibitor. And he's only on it for about um, less than three months. I want to say it was 10 weeks, eight weeks, something like that. And then all of a sudden gets bloody diarrhea, really problematic bloody diarrhea. Um, He goes to a walk-in clinic. Um, They gave him some antibiotics uh, or something. And then he goes home. It never gets better. He gets hospitalized. He's in the hospital for five weeks with severe diarrhea and bloody diarrhea. And he gets biopsied. And the biopsy looks more like ulcerative colitis. And the question is, um, was this due to the secukinumab or was this due to um, you know, an underlying uh, degree of, of um, shall we say, um, uh, spondoarthritis, which is certainly a, a, a real possibility here. So, um, uh, but the story basically gets more interesting, and that is that he gets treated. You know, the the secukinumab is stopped. He gets treated with a number of different things. Has really problematic anemia. We switch him over to a drug for his colitis. I want to say it was Azacol, and then also put him on a TNF inhibitor. And there's very, very slow, if almost no resolution to his um, uh, colitis. And uh, and then because it never goes away, uh, and we're talking now more than a year after he's still dealing with colitis. So his arthritis is fairly well controlled. And he still needs the Azacol. Um, I initially called this IL-17 inhibitor-induced colitis. And you can get ulcerative colitis, you can get Crohn's disease. But with time, I'm saying, no, it's part of his syndrome. He's got a seronegative arthritis with psoriasis, and maybe it's just that the IL-17 brought on his colitis, which was really dramatic. You know, he lost 20 pounds of weight. He had to have, um, you know, uh, many transfusions from blood loss. He was having up to... 15 bowel movements a day. It was a mess. So what you need to know is the data on colitis risk with IL-17 inhibitors. The bottom line is it's pretty uncommon. You know, the looking at um, two different large studies of ixekizumab and secukinumab with each about four to 5,000 patients, they had You know, in one ixekizumab uh, review, it was 19 probable uh, IBDs. Um, and more ulcer colitis than Crohn's. Um, and, and in the other, secukinumab, it was 21 IBD cases, more Crohn's than secukinumab, 12 to 9. But the interesting thing is what were the rates? If the person um, uh, was in a psoriasis trial, the development of Crohn's disease was 0.6 per 1,000 patient years. Ulcer colitis, about 1% per 1,000 patient years. But if you had, and it was a spondylitis trial for the IL-17 inhibitor, the rates were, looks like three, two or three, two and a half to seven times higher. Meaning the rate in a secukinumab in an ankylosing spondylitis trial was 7.7 per 1,000 patient years compared to psoriasis, 0.6. 
and ulcerative is 2.9 compared to psoriasis 1.9. So again, a two and a half to eight fold increased risk in patients with spondylitis. What does that mean? Well, we know spondylitis has that occult ileitis. Patients who may have uh, later on in their life develop and uh, not just ankylosing spondylitis, but now develop colitis, either ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease. So again, under what circumstances do they evolve to develop their fully manifest disease, which would include colitis? We don't know, but clearly IL-17 inhibition might be the trigger that pushes someone into it, or this was just a coincident event. I bring this case up because I had another case exactly like this. Um, it was with the other IL-17 inhibitor, and they developed bad colitis, but it never went away. And we're now treating that patient you know, with a drug that works for the psoriasis and the colitis, used to kinemab, uh, and also helps the arthritis. So I think time is needed to really know this answer to the story if, as to whether this is drug-induced colitis or a diathesis of the uh, underlying disease. Hope you enjoyed these QD clinics on psoriasis.